Me, 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 me. <laughs> We're recording, JD. Okay, <laughs> From the top, okay. Welcome to another edition of the Bones of Advertising. I'm Craig McLeod and you are... I'm TV's Troy McClure. You may remember me from such instructional videos as media buying. It's not just darts and blindfolds. Media <laughs> buying, it's not just darts and blindfolds. I don't know whether he actually did that episode, did he? <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg, alien stooge, question mark. No, I've got, no, I've got nothing. <laughs> let's, uh, let, let's kick on with that. That was bloody great, mate. I think you've just well, got to look a little bit on your American accent with your Troy McClure. You've got to really get into it. But nothing that a little practice won't make perfect. It was a, um, the day, the day um, uh, Phil, was it Phil Donahue? Was that yeah. him? Yeah, you mean the talk show host? Uh, no, the guy who did the voiceovers. Um, uh, no, sure I can't remember his name. Phil Donahue was Phil the guy Hartman. who did the talk show. He had the show Donahue. The day Phil Hartman died yeah. was one of the saddest moments. I mean, it wasn't. A, it was a very sad ending um, for uh, for Phil. But um, what a talent! What just yeah. a what just a crazy buddy talent. Unbelievably good. I'm TV's Troy McClure. Yeah, TV. You may remember me. Just now, JD, have you got a bone for us to pick <laughs> over today? <laughs> I've got a great one today. You've got another bone. You've also got a bone. Oh, I've got, I've got bones. <laughs> I've got skeletons in the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> we have yet, we have yet to, we have yet to open some of the cupboards <laughs> I've got. Open the there. closet. Yeah, right. <laughs> What's your bone today, JD? I would like to talk about media. No, not media. Agency relationships. I got okay. media back oh. there when I was Phil. Um, no, agency Boy, relationship. I, I would really like to talk about how do you how do you get a good one? How do you know what kind of agency? Like, if you're a client, how do you know what kind of agency you want? What kind of yeah, agency what, will work for you? If you're, a, if you're an agency, what kind of client do you want? Like, you know, it's very easy for all agencies to go. No, we can do that. Absolutely, we can. We can absolutely, and you know. Sometimes they don't. Uh, they just don't fit. No, so I thought we'd. Um, I thought we'd go into uh, get into that and um, uh, uh, just have a chat. And um, you're the uh, you're the uh, you're the agency owner. So let me ask you. Let me ask you, sir. What do you reckon is the biggest mistake clients make? when they go looking for agencies? Really good question, JD. And thinking on the fly on that one, really starting off with being an agency owner is, is great. There's some fantastic things about it. And there's also some stuff that's kind of tough. You know, the last couple of months, being an agency owner has been really interesting. But what I reckon clients <laughs> need to do... I like to you say that. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. When I say interesting, I really do mean interesting. Like there's a whole stack of stuff, like our ability collectively to pivot and get ourselves online so quickly. Again, not, not that it's the brag show, but, but was amazing. Like we literally overnight went from being in the office to everyone at home and being able to produce and continue to, to, to develop work, commensurate with client expectations, still going beyond client expectations, we're able to pitch. We're able to look for business, so we never stopped. I mean, one of our episodes was definitely about selling and continuing to business develop. We never stopped, you know that. So, you know, it's been, it's been interesting, and I say that because I've learned a lot during this time. It's been really, really interesting for us there. But what do clients do that I think is a mistake when it comes to looking for an agency? I think they don't do enough word of mouth. They don't ask for recommendations. It's like interviewing an employee, I reckon. You've got to have a set of questions that you can go through as a client yeah. looking for a prospective agency that's going to uncover the components that their capability is going to meet the needs of what you're looking for. That, that's what I think. I think they don't scratch deep enough. Yeah, I, uh, I did a bit of research. I did a bit oh. of due diligence. Due diligence, I've yeah, done I, it. I like it. I've, got a, um, I've got a list. I've got onto Google. And I got into how do you choose the right agency? Yeah, right. And apparently, apparently, this is what you've got to look for. 
Strategy, creativity, customer centricity, project management, ability to forecast trends, ability to measure, technical capability. Stop me, stop me if the, if the list gets too long. Keep going, Product the perfect wife, isn't it? Or the perfect husband. <laughs> Flexibility, transparency, an ability to understand your product, an ability to understand your business model, an ability to understand what you need. There's, wow. <laughs> there's, there's too much information out there from yeah, people right. who probably have their own little barrows to push and they're saying, if what you need is exactly what I've got. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you know, it's a, there was a delightful uh, uh, article I read by a guy called Dave Trott this week. Uh, and if you get a chance on Marketing Week, Dave Trott writes a blog for them. And it, talk, it just says, never ask a barber if you need a haircut. <laughs> because essentially the answer is always going to be yes. Well, it's it's a, it is fascinating. Like they, they said that um, he, he, he pointed out how in the medical profession, there's so many doctors with so many drugs and so many new treatments that every time you go to them and you show a, a symptom of anything, they've got the cure for you. And when they had a doctor strike in Italy, mortality rates went down by 30%. <laughs> <Like> <laughs> Wow, don't go see a doctor and you live. <laughs> Doctors are killing people because they're trying to over-prescribe. And yep. it's the same, with, it's the same with, with advertising agencies. If you go to an advertising agency and you say, can you do, uh, can you do digital media production and 3D animation? Yep. And the answer is, of course, of course we can. <laughs> like, so you're right. Go and talk to people who who know what the agencies are around town, who's good at what they, you know, at what, they, at what you need. And just go and talk to people. If you're going to buy a car, you're going to spend six months buying a car. Yeah. And you're probably going to spend more in the first year with an agency than you would buying a car. If you're going to spend that much time considering buying a car and you're just using that to drive from home to work, and the agency is going to dominate half of what you do at work. Yeah. Spend a spend a little bit of time, just a bit, considering yeah. that. How does an agency choose the right client? How do you go about measuring? Say you're one of the agencies potentially like us who does well from a point of website inquiry. Yeah. How do you go through a process like we were just talking about? Uh, how do we go through a process of vetting clients to make sure the people we're proposing to work with are the right type of client for what we've got to offer? I'll tell you, I'll tell you the best secret I've ever, ever learned in advertising. And it applies to clients wanting to talk to agencies and agencies wanting to talk to clients. And I'm going to whisper it because I don't want it to get out. I'm coming in close. Go and have a chat. Have a coffee. Have a, have a coffee. Have a coffee. Talk Jack. to people. Talk to people. Communicate. That's the one thing clients, I think, want more than anything else is they want someone to communicate where things are, how things are going, what are the stumbling blocks, where are the barriers. Like in an ongoing sense, that's what they. That's what. That's what every good relationship is built on. Yeah. Like. Like some people call it transparency and some people call it, it's just having a chat, like just being able to talk to people. So go and have a talk with the agency, the agency representative, or if you're an agency, go and have a talk to the client. And if you don't like them, if you don't get on, either change the person who's going to be interfacing with the agent, you know, who's going to be the client agency interface or just polite, politely decline. Yeah. Just say, Thanks very much. We've had a look. You know, I knew a guy, I knew a guy who used to politely decline by over-quoting. Yep. <laughs> the only risk you run there is if they say yes. You might make some yep. money, but you've still got to deal with the dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> it's really sad when you realise that you're the dickhead. You know, like, like you look in the mirror in the morning and you go, this is the face they didn't want. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep, absolutely. I found... On a, on a smaller scale, there is power in being in a position 
as an agency to say, that isn't right for us. There really yeah. is. You know, and I found yeah. it also empowers the guys, the, the team, you know, the, the, the people we work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes yeah. you can feel it really early on. Sometimes when you get to a point of, you know, building the, the plan or the strategy, you get a sense of it. And I'm always encouraging the guys to think, what's the long-term opportunity here? Are we going to be able to work together? Like we were saying before, our goal as an agency isn't just to work on one project with a client. Our goal is to take them from a single project into an ongoing opportunity where they see us as an extension of themselves. So if they've got a marketing team, if they also have designers, if they have digital, if they don't have any of those things as well, our goal is really to, to assist them to get where they need to go, but so much so that they look at the relationship between us, that transparency you were talking about, and particularly the conduit. So that person that is the relationship manager between the client and between us, really yeah. looking at those people as an extension of their business. Now, I'm saying work in progress, like you were talking about before, you know, really talking to the client on an ongoing basis and getting to understand, ask the client to scratch a little bit deeper when they're looking for an agency, but also as an agency, scratch a little bit deeper when you're actually working with the client to get a yeah. sense of where they're really trying to go. We're big on understanding the underlying goals. We want to know why they want to do this. Okay, so if we're developing a campaign, what's the underlying component of the campaign that we need to hear about? Is there an excess of stock? Is there a need because pressure's coming from sales for us to deliver a certain amount of leads? Does someone's job have, is someone's job on the line? Are they about to get the chop because they're not getting where they need to go? We've got to get yeah. low just, we want to do a campaign. You know, okay, we want to do a campaign. We want to move a certain amount, but perhaps we should look a little deeper and really try and understand the business component that's driving the creative output that we're really working towards. I think it comes down to, I think it, it, it definitely comes down to uh, a sense of trust. Can I trust these people? So from a, from a client point of view, you're going to, there will be a time where you're sitting at your desk and you're thinking, I've got to move 10,000 kilograms of bloody widgets that someone's over ordered and it's up to me because for some reason, you know, I was out of the room when they had the meeting and all of a sudden I'm the one, I'm the monkey who's got to buddy move all this stuff. Yeah. What's the, when, it, when, I've, when I've written the brief and I, I have to assume I know enough about the product and enough about the people who are going to buy it, like I'm going to write the brief, I'm going to go to the agency and I'm going to brief them. At some point, there will come a time where the agency says, We've got an idea and it's going to, we're reasonably confident it's going to work, but we can't prove it. Yeah. We can't back it up. Or going back to last week, here's an ad that answers everything you need, but it's a little bit wacky. There's a bit of magic there. Everyone that we've spoken to thinks it's bloody brilliant. It's just bing. <laughs> Do I trust these people? Yep. Do I feel like they have my best interests at heart? Do they want, are they in the, are they in the business of growing my business from a client's point of view? And from an agency point of view, you want someone who, I mean, some of the worst meetings that I have ever sat in as an agency person is when someone from in, further inside the client's organisation comes in and just assumes that, they, well, no, they don't have any real respect for marketing or for the communications role of, within the organisation and they just insult and berate and are incredibly rude and disrespectful to the people who are coming in to try and help them save their business. Yeah. And I, I, I understand that some people don't get... Uh, advertising and marketing and, and just want to, you know, and the response to that is just be aggressive. Just do what I, just do what I say. Yeah. But if you've got people like that, they're just toxic and you, you know, how much money is your health worth? Yeah. And I've come back to your point, JD, real simple one that for people to understand what we do, marketing is about the tree, right? Our, our job is to cultivate, yeah. foster and grow the tree. Yep. I love that analogy. Oh, it's brilliant. Yes, then, yes, you're right. 
the job of sales is to pick the fruit from the tree that marketing creates. Now that's a real yep. simple analogy. So when you do get into those situations <clears throat> and we've both been there, when someone yep. doesn't really understand it, I think they're missing the whole sense of this tree of opportunity that marketing's trying to create so that sales yep. can come along and pluck all of that fruit and we can continue to grow. That's why the yep. tree is so important because once the fruit's gone and we've plucked it, we've got to be able to grow more fruit yep. to be able to sustain the business. You can't grow a tree with a pair of secateurs. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Someone put a picture of Edward Scissorhands up, please. <laughs> you just, like, if you just keep picking the fruit, sooner or later you're right. Yeah. There's no fruit. JD, quick so, one for me. Tell me about yeah. <clears throat> what's the right size of agency? You kind of touched on it in your intro. Give me a sense yeah. of what's the right size. So for clients that potentially could be watching this, how do you choose size? And is size... Of, of interest these days. I mean, we've seen a big rationalization of agencies. We've, we've talked, yep. you and I, not, not in the podcast about a, a magic number of about a dozen is where a, a really solid agent can sit as far as people go. What, what's yep. the right size? Well, it's, it's, all, it's all very different um, these days. Technology has made all things possible for all people. However, there are some uh, businesses Financial, large financial institutions, for example, who need large agencies. They need large amounts of infrastructure. They will have all sorts of challenges in all sorts of places and they will have different levels of hierarchy. And so there needs to be a sense of, it's a bit Russian parliament, you know, you can talk to people on your level and they can talk to, but you know. Yep. So I, I think if you're a, if you're a large, marketing function in a large organisation, you're probably best to go with a large agency because they will have all of the infrastructure that you will need. And there's just, you've got a whole lot of people in the beast and you've just got to have enough people on the ground being able to do exactly what you need it to do. And as, as, as flexible and as, um, uh, you know, um, uh, responsive as small agencies can be, a small agency can't feed a big beast. It just can't have, like you just, you're setting yourself up for failure both ways. Yeah. But there is, there, is an, there is enough good knowledge around great people who are in uh, very nimble organisations and it's very easy if you need to get, so if you, Craig McLeod, need to get, uh, you need to, to run an operation that allows you to service the clients you've got in a very, very uh, hands-on, very responsive way. And if one of them comes and says, look, I've got this big thing that's happening, it's come out of nowhere, or, you know, this is the thing that we've been planning for, you know, six months, there are enough really, really good freelance talent around that you can just say, give me one day and I will get you the best possible person in Melbourne to work on this piece of business. So there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's enough of a floating pool to take out the slack in the, in the, in the market, if that makes any sense. So I yeah, think you need, you need people who, it comes down to what's the, What's the, who's the immediate person that you speak to? And essentially, I reckon people don't care how you get it done. As long as you get it done and it's good. Yeah, like, absolutely. I agree. Everyone, everyone remembers buddy Michelangelo, but they don't remember the 20 other people he had up the scaffold with him with buddy paint and stucco dripping on their faces while he painted the hand of God. Like, yeah, exactly. no one remembers it. No one remembers them, but no one cares. No, like, no. Who's, the, who's the person you're going to be dealing with and do you trust them that they can get stuff done? I think 12 people, anywhere between 12, 15 is a really handy, easily managed amount of people for most clients these days. And it makes sure that if, you're, if you feel like you're a small client, you will not be overwhelmed you will not have those situations where 
someone comes in and says, I used to work for McCann when McCann had Holden, this is way, way back. And they lost clients because we had to service the beast that was Holden. And we, and we couldn't, back, you know, back then, before the internet. Before the internet. You, you couldn't, you, 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 you had to pick between, here's this massive piece of business and here's a smaller piece of business. Who's going to get the love? Yeah. And, and the chief financial officer knew exactly, exactly where the love was going. So go on, go on, like it's, there's no perfect number. It depends. It depends, but there's no perfect number, but is there enough of the right sort of talent for what you need to do on the ground at the right time for you to be able to do what you need to do? And yep. are they committed to your business? Sorry, ask, went on a bit there. Ask for some references, do yep. your due diligence, ask for some yep. word of mouth, and then go away after providing a brief and assess what comes back. Go through it in, in detail. Don't just look straight at the quote. Look at what they're offering. Look at their process. Look at how they articulated their process because that's going to be the way in which they're going to take you on a journey from idea yeah. all the way through to delivery. So yeah. do your due diligence and, and ask some people that have worked with them what they're like. Yeah, yeah. No, you're exactly right. And if you do that, then you actually get an idea. Like sometimes the response that comes back isn't the right response, but the way they got to it was in top was exactly right for you. Yeah, so, right. you know, I think there is there there are there are there are enough cues out there. But I, I keep going back to it and I keep going back to it. You just talk. Just go and have a chat. You know, and if you don't like the people you talk to, ask them to change and you never know, Troy McClure may come into the meeting. Who knows who you'll get? <laughs> And likely, if you do like who you talk to, it's probable that you're going to have a great relationship long term. Really yeah. is. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. another edition of Bones of Advertising, my boy. Here we are. We're done. Nice work. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll see you next week, my friend. <laughs>